Welcome back to the Cybersecurity Incident Response Playbook. This is episode three of our eight part series where we cover each phase of the Incident Response Playbook. I am Justin Tolman. I am the Forensic Evangelist for Xtero. And like I said, this is an eight part series. You can see the episodes listed here. This is episode three, so we already have the overview and the preparation phase posted on our YouTube channels, which you are on one of them right now. So be sure to subscribe for the rest of them. You can see the dates here. We have a bunch of other content that I think you will find interesting. So check that out. So if you're coming into it right now, go ahead and check the channel for episodes one and two. That'll get you up to speed to where we're at and then rejoin here to watch detection and analysis. So let's go over detection and analysis as part of the CISA incident response playbook. So just as a review again, this is the flow chart of the playbook. So we've covered preparation, which is up in green. And now we're going to drop down and that there's been an incident. So we need to begin jumping through the process of the playbook. Okay, I'm going to darken out what's not going to apply here. And you can see declare an incident, determine investigation scope. Then once we've determined our scope, we need to collect and preserve our data perform analysis on that data. And then once we've performed our analysis, we wanna to continue to look for new signs of compromise. And I understand there's some bridges here missing. We will get to those in future episodes, but we're going to look for those new signs of compromise. If we detect that activity, we're going to continue to perform actions. And once we no longer detect an activity, we can adjust our tools with what we've learned and the sequence continues. Let's jump in and talk about detection and analysis. One of the things that CISA focuses on very heavily, we covered this in the preparation phase, is communication. And that is going to be a theme among every phase is communication, communication. All relationships are based on good communication and it's no difference here. So we need to have good communication with CISA as the government's lead for asset response. Okay, so they're going to be the ones that are going to coordinate these type of investigations between your company and possibly other agencies as it is necessary. And they will help you to make sure that you have the resources necessary to do the task at hand. The other thing that we want to do during detection and analysis is forensically collect our data to determine what the tactics, techniques, and procedures are in this current breach. We want to be able to report on that data and we want to be able to update our response policy and technology after it happens. We'll talk about this, but when the breach is happening, reporting and figuring out how we need to update may not be the easiest thing to do because you're trying to secure your network, you're trying to secure your resources. The cool thing about forensics and forensic collection is that it encapsulates that information in an unchanging container, allowing you to come back later and do all the necessary steps that we're actually gonna talk about later in this video series. And then the other thing that we need to do is continue to update our technology in real time as we learn about new incidents, new breaches, new issues, if they come up. So. What does it mean when we need to declare an incident and determine scope? Remember that this applies to the FCEB agencies, the Federal Civilian Executive Branch agencies, and per this playbook, they must promptly report all cybersecurity incidents regardless of severity to CISA. What needs to happen here right at the front is someone needs to reach out and contact CISA. So you, your agency should have a Federal Network Authorization or FNA on hand, you need to activate that and request CISA assistance. You can go and declare an incident by reporting it to CISA via their website, which looks like this. And if you scroll down just a little bit, notice that we can report incidents, phishing, malware, vulnerabilities. We can share indicators, which we'll talk about in a later video, and then you can contact them. So if we wanted to report malware, you can just click the link. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through and report anything. I'm not an FCEB but you would fill out the disclaimer and then go through the submission process. It's a good link to have ready to go so that you can report any incidences as soon as possible. 
We want to determine the scope of the investigation by analyzing our network data, our host artifacts, proxy logs, router traffic, endpoints, etc. But again, we need to know our baseline. We covered this in the preparation phase. It's so important that you have a baseline set up for what is expected within your network. When people log on may be part of that. If you're dealing with maybe an insider threat, is somebody logged in outside of their band? Is a process running a little heavy? Is there heavier network traffic than should be expected right now out of certain networks? It's so important to know your baseline and then you can identify those out of band. That's going to help you determine the scope of your investigation and where something may be happening. You're going to be bringing in information from a lot of different places. You need to have visibility and channels and procedures to correlate these reports into a centralized location that's easy to digest and easy to react to. So these can be from your automated systems on the perimeter, your forensic systems, user reports, contractors, and third-party providers as well. So you just need to have a system in place that allows you to bring in all the information so that you have as complete a picture as possible, which is always the difficult part, but, but it's, it'll be less difficult if you've thought about it prior to and are able to execute it now in this step. Next, we need to collect and preserve our data. CISA says this is for incident verification, categorization, prioritization, mitigation, reporting, and attribution. Lots of shuns in that, but very important stuff. Remember that if we collect it and preserve it in forensic containers, we can continue to react to the breach if we have an idea of what we need to do, and then we can do deeper dives later because those forensic containers are gonna maintain against any type of change. The other reason we need to do this specifically for the categorization, reporting, and attribution is part of the CISA playbook is reporting this information back to CISA. We talked about that and we'll talk about it again later and adjusting our tools as well as other organizations learning from your incident and adjusting their tools. We need to know what we need to do. We need to know what went down, all that sort of stuff. And if we don't collect the data when it matters, it'll be gone and we can't learn as much as we would like. You're gonna collect this data from the perimeter, internal network, endpoints, and that includes uh, servers, hosts. If if something is involving any cloud repositories, you may wanna collect information, logs and stuff from those as well. You wanna preserve that data in a forensic structure, an image format, something that is hardened against changes and something that can be validated through the whole process that will result afterwards, the analysis process, et cetera. Any information that you gain through this collection should be shared with the various incident response teams within your organization, but it also needs to be shared with CISA. Why? Again, CISA coordinates the responses for this type of attack across all FCEB agencies. And so it's important that they know as much as you know so that everyone can benefit from the work that you're doing. And you will want that when somebody else is breached and you can benefit from their work as well. So then we're gonna move on to analysis. Of course, we need to look at the data and our whole goal is to develop a technical and contextual understanding of what's happening. We need to know what's going on. What are their targets? What are they going for? And again, this is gonna be comparing against that baseline. If you don't have a baseline, you skip that prep step, you're gonna have an issue. So you wanna make sure you have that. Can't harp on that enough. You're trying to identify the root cause of the incident. Is it inside? Is it outside? Are they using servers? Is it an endpoint? Is it malware? What type of attack? That's going to dictate, of course, how you respond to that, how you isolate it, etc. One of the resources that you have is the MITRE ATT&CK webpage, which you can view here. And it has a big old list of different types of attacks and breaches that can happen. And then you can look at them and get information about them on this website. So this is a good site to have and the CISA playbook points it out and tells you to compare what is happening within your network to the things that are happening here, the TTPs, uh, the techniques, tactics, and procedures. And so that you can react in the most efficient way. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. There are resources out there between CISA and the MITRE ATT&CK that you can get a leg up on what is happening. So be sure to check that out.
Of course, as you're going through your analysis, you wanna be sharing what you're finding with the incident response teams so that they can refine scope, develop new indicators of compromise to continue to search the network. Remember, part of the playbook is to constantly be searching for new breaches and new attacks within your network. During your analysis, some of the questions that CISA provides you that you can ask yourself or seek to answer as you're going about your analysis are listed here. Kind of like a checklist, but more open-ended, more workflow oriented. So take a look at this. This is in the CISA playbook. You can, of course, and you should download the playbook and you can reference this, but here it is on the screen. If you wanna take a look, if you wanna screenshot it, go ahead and pause it. You can get it right there, but this can provide a guide uh, to your investigation. So be sure to check that out. Lastly, we want to adjust our tools. The priority one is modify your tools to slow the pace of the attackers advance through your network. Again, isolation of the attacker within your network, you wanna minimize data loss, minimize risk without tipping them off. The other thing you wanna do is as you learn, you wanna modify your tools to increase the ability you have to detect the attacker's move in other areas of the network. If you're scanning only one area and you figure out how they're moving, what tactics they're using, well, maybe we apply that to other networks as well, other areas of the agency to make sure that they are not also in other areas. So you wanna make sure that you're updating network wide so that you can get early detection if they move out. This is especially likely if they notice your efforts in priority one of slowing their, their pace, they may try to move into another network. And so you wanna make sure that you're updating those tools so you can detect that move early. Of course, the main goal, and this aligns with zero trust, is to minimize data exfiltration or data loss destruction during the breach. Of course, that's what we're all about, is protecting the data, whatever that data may be for your agency, whether it's data being stolen or data being deleted, we want to reduce the risk of that occurring. Okay, so again, what we did is we declared an incident by contacting CISA, uh, when something happened through the website, we determine the investigation scope by analyzing what we know from the different areas, whether that is through re people reporting, our perimeter defense, and other network tools, etc. We're going to forensically collect and preserve that data so that we can perform deep dive if we need to later so that we can report and so that, again, we can update CISA and the relevant agencies on what's going on. During our analysis, we're going to determine what the target of the attack is, any IOCs that we can use to update, and we're going to continue to look for other indicators that they may be in other networks. While doing that, we're searching for new signs of compromise. Did they detect us in our first steps of remediation and have moved to other things? If we detect that activity, we need to run through the loop. We adjust our tools and continue to loop through. Now, again, there's some other things in here. We're gonna talk about those in future episodes, but that gives you a quick overview of detection and analysis in the CISA incident response playbook. Thanks for watching. This is episode three. Next week, we'll drop episode four, which is gonna talk about containment. Go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you get notified when the next episode comes out. Thanks again.